Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, honoring us with his presence, the irascible Eric, no nickname Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing great. Glad I to be I think your new nickname is going to be irascible. It sounds that way. I think it's been three, four weeks in a row now. Yeah, I'm just, I just, I mean, you know, and it's completely wrong, but <laughs> it's just fun to say the word. Uh, we've got Jeannie Morum back on the podcast. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. How are you? Great. Honored to be back. So glad to have you back. We've got the bear land. We should actually have like a grr go off when, when we announce bear land, Aaron. Bear land, Aaron. Grr. Hey, hey, pretty good. Good. And then, of course, we've got the terrorist hunter herself, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, welcome back to the round table. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's just get into it because we've got a great topic to start the round table. And Jeannie Morham, you want to just kind of lead us into it? Sure. Uh, so as we all know, you know, mailing is uh, most important in marketing. So I'm back in mailing and well, what's happening is I'm getting voicemails and I'm getting very angry hate mails. So for example, they're telling me to hook off and I don't know if you have to bleep that, <laughs> what, but they're nasty and yeah. they're telling me I'm in, insulting their intelligence. So um, trying to stay positive through all that. Okay. So when you do get the hate, what is your initial reaction? Mine? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I'm kind of offended for okay. a second, for a second, but I've been doing it long enough that I know I'm doing something right if they're, if they're responding to me. So I actually turn around and look at it positively. But another thing I do, I don't know if this is the proper way, but now I'm letting the voicemails go to vo or the phone calls go to voicemail. So I don't have to sit and um, argue or, you know, debate on the phone, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, and then if there's any way I can negotiate with them, I'll call them back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is really why we set up our intake process the way that we did using ring central and Zapier was so that we could literally qualify that seller. Are they confused with the offer? Do they like the offer or they just want to call us to yell at us. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's been a really good process just to do that. Um, Eric Peterson, what about you? What are, what are some of the, 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 the recent hate you've been receiving? Well, first of all, um, I like Jeannie, um, you know, basically let all those calls go to voicemail on occasion. I will pick one up. Um, and typically it goes okay, but if they're upset, I mean, and you do happen to pick it up, you know, I just try to calm them down and let them know, you know what, it's, it's a piece of paper in your mailbox. Like it's nothing to get upset about. If you don't like it, throw it away. You're not going to hurt my feelings, you know, and I just, I try to talk them down and, and, you know, speak rationally and just calm them down. But, but the best ones are the ones that leave you a voicemail and they, they act completely normal on the voicemail. And then you call them back and get them on the phone. And what do they want to do? They want to yell at you about that offer. Right. So they're, they're the sneaky ones trying to, you know, trick you into calling them back. Um, but uh, I've had, I've had some really interesting responses. Probably one of the, the most interesting was, um, I don't know, it was some time ago, probably a couple of years ago now. Um, went to my mailbox to get the mail and uh, get this nice little envelope, open it up, you know, thinking what offer is going to be in here? You know, what, what accepted offer? Where am I buying property today? And uh, it was full of ashes. They burned my purchase agreement and sent it back to me in the mail. So that was a fun story. Wow. Wow. That's, that's huge. Uh, Bearland, Aaron, how about you? How do you deal with it? Um, I, I don't deal with it too often. I mean, we definitely do let them go to voicemail first. Um, you know, sometimes it's in an email or a fax. Um, you know, I've had one, uh, pr Luckily, I think the worst one I've had was just somebody that scribbled across the whole page, F-O-C-K-U. And so, like, they were upset, but not a, ups 
fuck you. You know, they were upset, but not upset enough to cuss. Right. You know, or right. something. I don't know. But um, Maybe they weren't quite sure. How you know, but that's going to be just more possible. Too. They love meat the fuckers. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, you know, sometimes when you, you, you can tell somebody's mad on the voicemail and that sort of thing, um, just, you know, really, um, I haven't had any in a long time. So that makes me believe that I'm offering too much. But um, yeah, I, I generally, if, if they're just super mad, I don't even call them back because they're just calling to vent. I'm not like saying no where I'm, you know, I, I make a, a game of trying to turn them around because I don't know if I really want to bother. It's just not my personality to do that. But um, yeah, generally we just filter them out and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Mimi Schmidt, what do you do? My acquisitions manager has to deal with it, but honestly, I don't get many of them. I only had one and the person wasn't mad about the offer, the person called to insult my name. So the guy, the guy even ex he accepted the offer. He put a down payment on, told me to go ahead and uh, put together two, he wanted to buy two properties. And then he emails me back and he's like, I'm gonna have my agent call you. And the agent calls me, hi, this is Mimi with Part and Parcel Property. I knew from the number who it was. Said, what kind of name is Mimi? And he started, he got personal with it. And it really, I, th I had a really hard time managing my anger with that one. I learned my lesson that it's just not worth it. I should, I, I actually just ended the phone call after I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere. And I fired the guy, the fired, the buyer. I've never written a fired the buyer call, but um, because the, the agent, I think the agent felt um, threatened that us investors were treading on their turf, invading in their turf. Um, and so it was, it was personal. It wasn't just the offer amount, you know what I mean? But well, different type of situation, but because it was personal, it bothered me a lot more, but I learned that I just need to cancel the conversation when I get people who are mean on the phone and just end that transaction with whether it's a buyer or a seller situation and the transaction. There's too many other transactions to have. You didn't pull the, do you know, do you know who I am? <laughs> You know my full actually, time I did. I said I actually have a top secret security clearance. I'm a completely trustable person, right? Uh, right. I work for the Department of Defense. But uh, he actually called me. He, um, I had said that to the guy who wanted to buy the properties for me, and he told the agent. The agent said, "Well, that's suspect." And I just thought the the, the military is suspect. I mean, it was just really yeah. odd. So yeah, I learned my lesson. Yeah, you should be like, you know what? Go outside your window right now. And watch the circling drone, and then tell me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Those are those times you wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'll tell you. You know, when I first started, I dealt with so much hate, and um, it, I almost became immune to it. Now I have the acquisition manager. But what I would do is, I, I would, I would start to classify people as angry, crazy and then angry, crazy, and super mean, right? So the angry ones, I would actually take the time and try to convert. And the way that I would do it is I had, you know, I had younger kids at the time. So the first thing I would do is a pattern interrupt so they wouldn't think I was a telemarketer. So I would yell at my son before they even, like I even start talking to them. Like they say, hello? I'm like, Noah, put that toy down, right? And then I say, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, my, my son's, you know, three years old and looks like he's about to have a choking accident. Anyways, hey, it's Mark Podolsky with Frontier Properties. I received your, your voicemail and I totally understand why you're angry about the offer. You must have done some type of improvement. Did you drop a well or did you add power? Because oftentimes I don't know that and your neighbors are actually selling for that price. So I am so sorry. What improvements have you made? And I can adjust my offer. Silence. Well, I haven't made any improvements. Oh, you haven't. Okay. So why do you 
think that the price should be X, Y, Z. I'm just curious. And they're like, well, I don't know what the price should be. I just know what I paid for. I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, yeah, I totally get it. Nobody likes losing money, but this is what I call a sunk cost. And then I go through my whole thing about my grandfather was building a building and we all thought we were going to be millionaires, but it found that he's, he, it turned out the hundred thousand dollars he invested in the area was on a, it, the, uh, the ground was uh, faulty, right? So it was a sunk cost, but instead of just losing the hundred thousand, my grandfather kept building and trying to make corrections and fix the foundation. There was a, there was a bad foundation and he ended up spending about a half million dollars. And to this day, now I have to work, even though we thought like we would have to. So this happens a lot, right? Like the market turns on us. We keep paying our taxes. I'm like, you can keep paying the taxes on it for the next 10 years. I get it. And then call me back again and hope that the price has gone up. So, and then eventually like, they're like, okay, fine. Will you take, and then they start negotiating. But it, it, you know, that would be my, my sort of MO on doing that. The other thing was if they were crazy, and crazy angry at me, like I had somebody wish me ass cancer. That was a fun one, right? I've had people leave voicemails um, so, like, you know, unbelievably just crazy. And, um, like, <laughs> I mean, I should actually set a separate website of just their, their voicemails of, you know, things that I should be doing to their body parts. Um, <laughs> that... <laughs> Or their animal body parts. I mean, just so angry. I'm like, just throw the just throw the offer out. So those people don't really deserve a response. Um, but I do think that if they're just angry, there is a way to turn them around. What do you think, Mimi? I think that strategy is brilliant. I think that's Thanks. absolutely br brilliant. Talking about the kid, it kind of humanizes you, right? Right. And then the, oh, I'm sure I misunderstood, right? When you apologize first, that's always disarming to folks. Yeah, absolutely. I took, I took responsibility right away. And I, and I empathize with them. Like, I feel yeah. angry too. If I spent $30,000 on a well and put, I put in power and I made all these improvements and I got this terrible lowball offer. Totally get it. What improvements have you made? It's perfect. Uh -oh. Yeah. Barely and Aaron, what, are you, what about you? I love it. I mean, I'm definitely going to start doing something like that on the, the angry ones, you know, angry you've ones, talked yeah. about crazy and mean though. So, and that, you know, I, I know what you're talking about. And the scary thing is those people are driving around in traffic with us too. You no, know, absolutely. That's why, you know, especially out here, we don't honk because of the road rage. You're like, okay. Yeah. How about you, Jeannie? I love it. And you know, I think, I think the reason that they're angry is because they're afraid and they don't trust you yet. So what you did is you're gaining their trust by calling them back and building a relationship with them. And I have found that as well. You know, a couple of my calls we've called back and I've actually bought their land because they trusted us. And, and, and again, they're scared because they did pay more. The area I'm, I'm in, they did pay more and I'm, I mean, it's embarrassing how much I'm offering and how much they paid. I mean, they paid, you know, some of them seven, eight thousand dollars per property, and I'm offering less than a thousand. So they're they're pissed, and it's not they're not pissed at me or mad. I should say mad. They're just mad at the situation, and they, you know, they want their money that they they invested, and they're not going to get it. Yeah, and you can always say, look, you can take that tax write off against a, a gain on your taxes, so it's not going to you know, you're not going to feel it as much. So take that um, $6,000 loss towards a $6,000 gain on another investment and have it just even out on the taxes. Um, irascible Eric Peterson, what do you do? How do you like that strategy? I think it's great. I think uh, you made some great points about, um, you know, different ways to, to kind of turn people around. Um, you know, I think when I have had those conversations in the past. It's been very similar um, in approach, uh, starting with the apology and, and trying to understand where they're coming from before trying to defend a certain price or something that you're offering. So I think that's definitely a good tactic to use um, if you're out there, you know, 
looking to to kind of resolve some of those those issues that uh, that come up from the mailing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it also sort of illustrates the uh, the mental health aspect of our country. Like, like Marilyn Aaron said, like we're living with these people. <laughs> Mimi's like, yeah, absolutely. So um, I think maybe a new nonprofit should be uh, Prozac in the workplace and just have like Prozac sort of dispensers, but having a tough day, just pop it, right? Take the edge off. Or, you know, Wine Wednesdays every day, right? Oh, like you just come day. in. Yeah, I'm up for that one. Sign yeah. me up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you, like you're having a tough day. Here, glass of Chardonnay, Mimi. Just take 20 minutes, you know, no worries. I have my own business. I could do that now. You see yeah. exactly. They're, they're even selling wine in cans now. So, right. Um, I do want just to mention to the listeners that this podcast is not sponsored by Prozac or any kind of wine company, <laughs> and we certainly are not suggesting that any of you become <laughs> raging alcoholics or or self- mix the two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. See a licensed professional. Anyways, let's move on to the next uh, subject. Uh, Mimi Schmidt, tell us what's going on with you and county taxes. So I knew I had a couple of lots I had to follow up on to pay their taxes. And I got some money in the bank, went out to the website today to do a little online tax paying. And there was this big red blurb across the top of my property that said that the payments had turned up, been turned off on the website and that my property was going to be, uh, have a tax certificate sold for it. And my stress level went through the roof. And so I learned about this particular property that I need to pay the taxes by May 31st, or they're going to issue a tax certificate. So next year I'll know. I think it's going to hike up the price on three of my properties. The this past year's tax is a hundred bucks. So I paid 2016 on one of the ones that I had owned at the time. But, um, so yeah, so I'll be better next year about knowing that. Of course, I know when they're due in each county, but I need to know more of the specifics. You know, sometimes I like to the for the taxes to go unpaid to see what kind of offers I get from other investors in the area right that's a great idea to see where the other people are offering um sellers so um yeah i won't do that past may 31st in that particular county next year yeah you know another strategy mimi is if you just bought it right you could do the overage strategy where if it's going to go to auction right let's say that you paid a thousand dollars the property and it sells for four thousand dollars at auction because of the back taxes there's now a three thousand dollar overage which is to go to you so you've just made your turn without having to do anything so it is a strategy that you could employ the problem is it depends on the state sometimes it takes six months to get your money sometimes it takes a year to get your money it's a whole different strategy i don't love it because you don't have total control but it is something that you could also look at worst case is that okay i'm not going to lose my money on this property, I might lose the property, but at the, I could always apply for the overage from the county. The counties won't tell you about the overage laws, right? Because if you don't apply for it, they okay. keep all the money. And this county does both, right? The tax certificate. So a person right. can pay tax certificate and make money off me when I do pay the taxes. And then if you go about three years, then they can actually sell it and have a tax deed. So right. to check that out. I yeah. Be- Berlin, Aaron, how do you avoid sort of this issue that Mimi just went through? Well, just knowing when the taxes are due and when you buy a property, um, if it has, um, you know, tax liens on it, um, the certificates, find out what, you know, make sure you know what the law is on how long you have before those things go to tax sale and so forth, because, um, I will admit I made a mistake on a property we bought and um, the notices went to the person I bought it from uh, and I never saw the notice that these pro- this property was up for or was going to be redeemed because um, the person had had the tax certificate for three years or something. Um, I'd sold the property to somebody on terms and they had made, you know, a significant number of payments or or dollar amount of payments so far. And I got a letter from 
the guy who had the tax certificate on it and said, hey, uh, I just want to let you know that I own this property now. And, uh, you know, so that was a pretty scary moment because I didn't pay attention to all those things. And uh, luckily, he was willing to sell me that property for, uh, you know, kind of like, let's say, I'll tell you some numbers. Let's say I bought the property for like $2,000. Um, it had, let's say, $1,200 in back taxes. And then um, I sold it for ten grand on terms. So right. I had some room in there. It wasn't too bad. He sold me back the property for uh, like four thousand dollars. He made some money. I, you know, I spent more than I should have, but I also didn't lose my payments. You know, I didn't lose my terms. I made goodwill with my buyer who had bought two more properties from me after that because he knew I was the type of person that would make things right. And now I'm still getting the payments on that property. So, and I'll still make money, not as much as I would have, but I'll still make money. So that was a pretty tragic mistake without any real financial loss. I mean, I lost a little bit of capital buying it back, but um, you know, I did also didn't have to pay the taxes because you know, I, I money wise, I still spent that money, but um, you know, when I got it back, it had a zero tax liability. So, you know, that was a, a bonus, I guess. No penalties and stuff. So anyway, that was a, a scary thing, but I've learned to, you know, watch out for those things. You got to know when those redemption periods are, and you got to know when the taxes are due for your county. And when you start getting a bunch of properties, um, you need some order in that. You need a, a way to figure, like, to be able to keep track of all that. So... Right, right. Jeannie, Jeannie Morum, is there a way, let's, let, let, let's just get granular with it. Are you doing this in your due diligence to know on yes. the front end? Okay. Uh -huh. and, and because I do everything myself, I, I'm not as um, far along as the rest of you, you guys here, but so I'm doing it all myself. And I'm not saying this is right either, but when I do my due diligence, I ask what the taxes are and I, I always pay everything right away. And I'm, and I'm selling them quickly. So I, probably sh wouldn't even need to, you know, pay the taxes, but I just do. And I'm, so I'm just doing everything along the way. So I understand how to do everything. And, but I'm, um, I'm, but my properties aren't as much as what you guys are paying for your properties. So I can sell them quick. And so I'm trying to speed it up and, and sell more um, and work myself up to properties that are costing thousands of dollars. So I haven't run into what, you know, me, me, and Aaron are talking about yet because I'm just paying them, paying the taxes right away. Right, right. I mean, knowing Eric Peterson, he probably has like a web scraper that automates the when the taxes are due and puts it into a Google sheet, which then has a zap, which then alerts him via email, which then goes filtered into a different email list, which then alerts him via SMS. But I just... I'm projecting his geekiness onto him. Eric, what do you do? Well, I was just thinking about a system I need to build. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I don't have a, a real solid system in place for tracking the taxes. I kind of get all those bills and I just kind of keep them in one spot and then lump them together and, and, you know, make payments as needed. Um, in the past, I have come across kind of like, Mimi mentioned um, certain counties where there's a period of time where you're basically locked out of paying the taxes, no matter what. I mean, <laughs> they don't care if you haven't paid them by that point, you can't pay them for the next two months. I mean, yeah. you can send them cash in the mail, you could send them a cashier's check, whatever it is, they're going to return it to you and not accept it until that time period has passed. Exactly. So I remember when I ran into that, I was very frustrated and, uh, you know, tried to talk to the treasurer and say, this is crazy. You know, I want to give you your money. You won't accept it. But, uh, but that's just how it is. So you got to be aware of those kinds of things. Obviously that doesn't happen in every County. Um, but in some places it does. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, um, you know, Mimi should start a new business called County tax laws dot Mimi. Mm -hmm. And then like, we just know 
you know, based on this county, here's the redemption period. Here's how long you have to pay your taxes before you lose the property. It's a tax deed state. It's a tax lien state. It's a hybrid state. Here's the treasurer. And um, I think that'd be a cool website. Yeah, I agree. And I also a lot, think a lot of like, work, but I probably ought to add it to my due diligence checklist. I mean, I know when the taxes are yeah. due, but when's the last time I can pay them before a tax certificate is put upon them? And then how many years can I go till a tax deed? You know, whether yeah, tax deeds, tax right. certificate, hybrid state, yeah. And it would be good to know if it, you know what their overage um, policy yeah. is as well. So it's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, I don't make, I don't know if you guys do this, but uh, I, I always, I love working with my buyers. I, just building that relationship. So I send them everything that I have because I'm, I'm the one doing due diligence. So not only do I send them the deed, but I send them the receipt of the taxes that I've paid. So I send them everything that I have. And I'll tell you something, I, maybe that's why I've been building great relationships with them because I'm so transparent to a fault, I think. But I'd rather be that way. Yeah, I know. I, I think it's great, um, Jeannie. And, you know, it's so funny because uh, I don't want to embarrass Eric, but we were just talking about Eric Peterson on the last podcast. We had a guy who is an expert on referral marketing. And his strategy is don't ask, right? Don't be self serving in any way. So if you have a contact, then basically all you're going to do is send them a handwritten, you know, note right? Or some type of glue gift, giving a little unexpected extra that is actually, you know, very personal to them. And you can go on Facebook and figure out what that might be, right? So if I wanted to get, let's say, Bearline Aaron, a glue gift, I would get him something, you know, related to motorcycles. And he would, it would be really thoughtful. But what I would do then is avoid the Land Geek logo completely. It would just be a blank handwritten note, not asking for anything. And Scott and I were saying, you know, who's an expert at this is Eric Peterson. Every year I get a handwritten note from Eric, right? And he just expresses his gratitude. And Matt said to us, he's like, he's like, think of all the contacts you have out of the 250, 300, 500 people, right? You guys are both talking about one guy. That's how powerful it is. And one year, Eric um, got me like, he knew, he knew I liked to juice. He got me a gift, a gift card to my favorite juice place. Like he's like these little things. And Eric was really cheap about it. I think it was like five bucks, but I still remember it, right? I'm just kidding, Eric. It was more than that. But, it, but it, you know, it was the thought that counts. And what Jeannie is doing, I think, is really, really great as far as building her business to the next level because those people are going to refer her more business. She's not asking for it. She's just giving more than they expect. And I think it's a really a, a phenomenal strategy. So Jeannie, if you added on to that a handwritten note, thanking them, I think it, even that would go really far as well. You know, and I, I'm trying to Google the, the speaker's name, but he's a, a very well-known entrepreneur and my, his name has left me, but he's done the same thing Eric has done. And he got a major contract with an, an NFL team and with the coach and he, everybody was trying to pitch him and he waited to the right moment and was kind of looking at what he liked in Facebook. And it was like, I think something like a coffee shop or something very simple and sent him something from that coffee shop. And that man called him back and he got like a, a $50 million contract just doing something very simple like that. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, and absolutely. And Eric could even argue like that relationship now between Scott and I is worth way more than $50 million. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Sure. So, so Eric, I mean, how did you develop that strategy? Not that it's a strategy. It could just be you, but it is something that puts that, that does differentiate you. Yeah. I think, um, it's just maybe a little bit of just who I am, my personality. Um, you know, I've always been, uh, I guess, someone that, that likes to give people gifts that, you know, have made an impact on me in some way, um, whether that's friends or family or, or whatever. Um, the, the writing of cards and, and notes and stuff, I actually, I dislike doing that more than anything. Um, but my wife loves it when I write her a card. So I, 
continue to try to get better and better at that. And, um, you know, I guess it's just a combination of those two things. And, um, you know, I think it's important to, to show people that, you know, you're thinking about them or that you, you, you value the relationship you have with them. And, um, oftentimes, you know, a, a little note or, you know, small gift of some sort may, uh, may help communicate that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't think it works if you're Machiavellian about it. I think if, as you grow your heart and you really authentically want to create joy in that person's life with the expectation of you're going to get nothing back, that's even better, right? Than, you know, seeking out like, you know, writing Grant Cardone, a, a, a handwritten note saying, hey, you know, I really love your stuff, hoping that he, you know, says, Hey, why don't you go tour the world with me and let's buy land together and be in my fund or whatever it is. Right. So I think when you do it from that place, it's, it really multiplies the impact much more. But, um, I want to thank you guys for being on this week's round table and, um, hopefully the listeners are getting value out of it. I don't know. Mimi, what do you think? You covered a lot today. I gained value out of it. I learned some things. Yeah. Bearland Aaron, are we good? We're definitely good. I love, I hope everybody gets a lot of value from these because I know I do. And it kind of gives me a little bit of pump for the rest of the week. So I really enjoy doing it. And I hope everybody enjoys listening to them. Yeah, absolutely. Jeannie, are we good? Uh, yeah. Do you, do you hear feedback from the listening audience? You know, I have to bribe them for it. Um, <laughs> So I asked them to subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support thelandgeek.com. And we send them the passive income launch kit course, which is normally $97 for free. So please do that and give us feedback if you're getting value and we'll give you even more. You know, can I just shoot you an idea real quick? Maybe fun yeah. maybe, maybe to um, give a shout out to our listeners that do give you feedback so we can hear what they're saying. No, that'd be great. And if you actually leave an Amazon review for the Dirt Rich book, like you can get the Kindle book now for two ninety nine, but if you send me a screenshot of the review that you left on Amazon, um, I'd love to send you a signed copy of the paperback as well. So just send me your, your, your address and um, let me show some appreciation for that because it, I love getting that kind of feedback and, and do it. But I, I got to bribe, Jeannie. I like to bribe. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. But look, people are busy. If you don't do that, they're like, oh, whatever. You know, yeah. I'll get to it. So, you know, that's, that's different. That's marketing versus like what we were talking about earlier, what, what Eric does. So I am expecting something in return, but nothing wrong with marketing. We're always mailing marketing, right? It's the, it's the core. Yeah. Eric Peterson, how about you? Are we good? We're good. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the listeners. And um, are we going to do it? Are we going to be, are we going to geek out on it? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, let freedom ring. Oh my gosh. That was pretty bad. I, think I didn't got, do it. We, we missed our other guys. You didn't you know do it. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> He's he's in the Aaron's sticks, Amy. His, his his internet's so laggy. Oh. Right. I wonder if we're gonna get like hate from like please stop doing let freedom ring at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that you said it, someone's gonna have to put it in the review. <laughs> right. Love the podcast. Hate the end of it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, and uh, Jeannie, hopefully, I'll see you at Mavericks this week. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, okay, this is my order now. I'm getting a, uh, a, la, a sugar-free vanilla latte with the breakfast burrito, which is super spicy, so it cuts the spice with the latte and their gluten-free cookie. Have you had the, co the cookie? No. Oh, it's crazy. Wow, I'm going it's then. really good. Yeah. I don't think you can uh, have a cookie for breakfast. <laughs> why not? What about lunch or dinner? I get burritos all the time. It doesn't have to be for breakfast. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm really letting myself go these days. I'm, I'm 47. I don't even care anymore. I'm eating cookies <laughs> and candy. Next, you know what? At, at, at Scottsdale Boot Camp, 
literally I'm going to look like Elvis right before he died. And I'm so excited. Doubt. You're going to wear a, yes, a leather suit. You're going to wear a fancy leisure suit. Oh, Mimi, I'm, I'm in a serious, I'm getting like one of those big belt buckles that, hi, that hides my big belly. I I'm do. just going to, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm like, let freedom ring. And just <laughs> <laughs> let it go. I have such a visual right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you want to see me and my expanding waistline, uh, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and uh, register for bootcamp. Uh, Mimi's going to be there. Jeannie's going to be there. Eric yeah. will be there. Can't You're wait. Are you going to make it? Uh, not making this one. Next one. Okay. So you guys will see. And um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. See everybody next week. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.